let us begin our electrostatics. So, now that we have had a reasonable amount of discussion on the vector calculus required for it, let me now go over to what we actually want to do. We are interested in talking about electric field. So, uh, I will not waste a lot of time on some of these things because this is all very familiar to you, but it is a good idea to uh, realize that physics is not in isolation. No matter what you are doing, whichever part of physics you are doing, you need a set of building blocks. And the fundamental law of electrostatics is what is known as Coulomb's law. And we all know that uh, the Coulomb's law, I will not state the way you are doing it in school. Uh, the like charges repel, unlike charges attract, all those you know. But basically, this is the uh, idea that I will uh, summarize the essential point of this. Supposing I have a charge Q1 here at a position vector R1 and a charge Q2 there at a position vector R2. So, that the vector R is the relative position vector of Q2 with respect to Q1. Then the force on the second particle due to 1 is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 which is a constant that comes Q1 Q2 the product of the charges divided by square of the distance between them and uh, a vector r is there. Depending upon whether q1 q2 is positive or negative the product, I have either a repulsive force or an attractive force. So, what one does very frequently is to write this instead of a unit vector and r square, make this an r cube and a vector r, this is the same thing really and that is the inverse square law. And since by Newton's third law, the uh, force due on 2 due to 1 is the same as force due to on 1 due to 2, but with a negative sign, I have F12 equal to F21. So, that is my Coulomb's law and the Newton's third law. So, let us summarize this. What is so special about Newton's law? What are the points that one has to know? First, inverse square law, it is an inverse square law force. Of course, we all know that that the force varies inversely as the square of the distance. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract is also something which you know. The third point which is an important point which should be made very clear, it is a long range force. You see a long range force means it is a force which really never becomes 0, it never becomes 0 no matter how far you keep one from the other. It may become weaker and weaker but never becomes 0. The, so, inverse square law is a long range force. Another important point is the force is a central force meaning thereby that the magnitude of the force only depends on the distance between the two and the direction is along the line joining charges. So, the, this is the central force. And, uh, well, it, we have defined something called a permittivity of the free space which is an epsilon 0. Now, I want to summarize uh, uh, the Coulomb's law force with a bit of a comparison of various types of forces. Now, you see in the nature we only have four types of basic forces. There is any force that you think of can belong to one or the other of this category. Now, in terms from weak to strong, from weak force to strong force, the weakest force is the gravitational force and uh, taking some scale uh, of 1, uh, which is the strength of the uh, strong nuclear force between nucleons, attractive nuclear force between the nucleons, uh, the gravitational force has a strength which is 10 to the power minus 39 or 38 times the strength of a nuclear force, which is essentially a negligible force and its range is infinite. As I told you, it is a long range force. Uh, the next in order of strength, increasing order of strength comes a weak nuclear force and that has a relative strength of 10 to the power minus 6 with respect to the strong force and it has a range of 10 to the power minus 18 meters. Uh, remember gravitational force is infinitely uh, ranged, 
that is long range. The nuclear force is very short range, but not that short, uh, but it, it has a 10 to the power minus 18 meter. Now, the real strong force with which we deal with leaving aside the nucleus is the electromagnetic force and the relative strength of it is about 1 by 100. Actually, a typical characteristic number is E square by CH cross which is 1 over 137. Okay? So, that is the fine structure constant which is 1 over 137, but roughly less than 1 percent of the strength of the nuclear force and the strong nuclear force with a range of about a Fermi which binds the nucleons namely neutrons and protons together that has a strength of 1. So, since we are talking about the uh, fundamental four fundamental forces, there is also a question of how do these things act. Now, remember that I have a, supposing I put two charges. Now, they have a force even when they they, they do not have to be in contact in order that there is a force. They, they have a force even when they are separated by a distance. The question is how does one particle know that the other particle is around so as to either attract or repel it. So, you, so, this is a question that has bothered people for a very long time that uh, you know I mean uh, so what actually happens. Now, this is the reason why we are learning about the field. What we say is this that let me give all my ex explanation with respect to uh, the electric electromagnetic forces. So, what we say is that when you have a charge, now the all the field all the space around that charge is a seat of electric field. The region uh, carries the information that there is a uh, charge there. Now, so when another charge comes to that region it has its of course, own region, but when another charge comes it gets influenced by this field. Now, this is uh, let me give you a very bad example similarity that is uh, supposing you are in the, in the presence of a person of very strong personality. The, the fact of his presence is sometimes felt by you. Now, as I said it is a bad example, but this is precisely what we are talking about. We are saying the fact that one charge is there it creates its field and since it is the range of electromagnetic force is infinite it essentially means that this information is there all over the space. In the modern language what we believe is that these charges are or any objects where we are looking for forces they continuously exchange certain things between them and these exchange particles are bosons. Since you are all teachers I do not have to explain to you. So, the carriers of long range forces which are the electromagnetic forces they are massless and in this case it is photon and as you know photon does not carry any charge. So, that is uh, all about the Coulomb's law. Now, I want you to realize another very important concept. So, I start with the building blocks. The first building block is the existence of Coulomb's law which is of course, an axiom. The second axiom is that supposing you are looking for calculating the electric field at a point due to let us say multiple charges. Now, the point is that how do what is the effect at a point due to the presence of multiple charges. Now, remember I told you that each one of them has their own electric field. Now, this is where we talk about what is called superposition principle. What we are saying is this that suppose I have a charge Q at let us say some point and I said already that all region around it is a seat of electric field. Now, if I have an electric field whatever is the reason for of its creation. Supposing there is an electric field at a point P and that field is E. If a charge Q finds itself at the point P, then it experiences a force Q times E. So, basically the electric field is the force exerted on a unit charge at a particular point. 
So, what we are now saying is this that supposing there are charges q i's at different points, let us suppose r i's are the positions at which the uh, charge q i's are there, then the electric field at a point p is simply given by a sum, remember it is very important, it is not given by product or division or by anything it is given by a vector sum of the forces exerted on that uh, part charge at the point p due to all the charges q i's. Now, since it is an electric field at the point p I put a unit charge. Now, this unit charge due to the presence of the charge q i at the point r i experiences a Coulomb's law force 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q i uh, this is uh, the relative position vector of the point p with respect to the position r i of the point where q i is there divided by of course, r cube as I told you this is Coulomb's law. Now, this is a very important concept. We are trying to say that physical effects add up. In other words, if there is a uh, force exerted on a charge due to uh, one field is E 1, due to another field is E 2 then when they are simultaneously there it will be the vector sum of u 1 plus e 2. Now, notice this is not something which you can prove, it is a superposition principle which is axiomatic that I take Coulomb's law and the superposition principle as the basic building block of my electromagnetism. So, having defined what is an electric field and having talked about the principle of superposition. I need to now, there is a question raised which I said I will take up, this is almost now time come for discussing the electric flux and the Gauss's law. So, remember we defined a flux of a vector field, we said that if you have a surface then you define the flux as the surface integral of the vector field over it which we defined in a particular way. Now, supposing this field now is my electric field. Now, that this tells me that I can define the flux through any surface as given by this is the definition of flux. The surface integral of the electric field over that surface and I have told you that uh, the definition of d s vector is the outward normal. So, let me now come to this question which came up. The question was that why is it that when we put a charge inside, I have a flux coming out positive or negative will depend upon the sign of the charge, let us not worry about that. The, but on the other hand if the charge is outside, I do not have a flux. Now, let us look at it in a slightly different way. But before I do that, let me explain the concept of what is known as a solid angle. Look at this, supposing I have a surface here, this is a surface and I am looking at a point P. Now, I would say, I will define that a surface uh, makes a solid angle at a point P. I will, I will sort of explain it to you by comparison with something else. So, let me, let me uh, come back and try to explain this. So, let us first go to the definition of an angle, ordinary angle. How do we define an ordinary angle? Remember that this is the way we looked at it, supposing this angle is theta. Now, if this angle is theta, how do we define this? It is an ordinary angle. Now, what we did is to say that look, if this, remember angle is a dimensionless quantity. The, you may sometimes measure it in degrees, radians or whatever but angle does not have a dimension and the reason is this. Supposing I look at this situation where this length is L and this is let us say R, then my L is given by R theta, this was your definition of ordinary angle, theta of course is in radians, this is my definition of ordinary angle. So, what did I do? I said that look, take a curve which is remember that this curve is such that 
uh, these are two radial lines. So, therefore, these are perpendicular to it. Take a curve and then divide the length that you make between these two points by r and that will give you angle theta. But supposing you had this a different uh, length, then also the definition is true excepting that you have to take the projection of this along the normal to this one. So, this is basically and this is also the definition tells you that theta is dimensionless because L is a length unit, R is a length unit. I may have a unit, but I may not have a dimension. Now, the so far as this thing is concerned, now the solid angle is concerned. Now, it is a straightforward generalization of whatever I told you just now. So, accepting that we had said that in defining a an angle, we look at a curve and ask the what is the angle that is subtended between the two radial lines, which uh, intersect that um, arc. Now, here what we do is this, we go one step and we say supposing I have a surface. Now, this surface at a point P makes a cone like structure. Remember the process is in three dimension, earlier we are in two dimension. Now, so what we said is in the earlier case an arc made an angle ordinary angle, but in this case a surface is making a type of a cone angle and that is what I will call as the solid angle. Look at this picture. So, what we are trying to say is this that here is a surface, I have taken it to be small because the uh, most of our definitions are defined like this. So, what we are saying is imagine now keep on drawing tangents from point P to various points on that surface and then you will get a cone angle here. Now, remember I defined the angle theta as the ratio of the length to the distance. Now, in this case I define a solid angle as the area like in the other case I also take the perpendicular area that is the area which is normal to those and divide it by because of dimensional reason I do not divide by a length, but I divide it by a square of a length. So, once again if this surface is not directly perpendicular then you take its projection. In other words if the outward normal to this surface is making an angle alpha with the radially outward direction, then you have d s perpendicular as d s cosine alpha divided by r square. So, that is the solid angle that this surface element subtends at the point p. Uh, tomorrow I will take up uh, the questions that have come in because we are we will collect all the similar questions together, but what I will do tomorrow is this I will go repeat the idea of solid angle and then tell you that how the Gauss's law follows from our idea of what is an electric flux and the idea of a solid angle. The question that was asked is why is it that when we have a charge inside a volume we have an outward flux whereas why is it that if the charge is outside the flux through that surface is equal to 0. So, since I have run out of time I will uh, take over from there. Thank you very much.